welcome back to Primacy Gaming. This is our part two video series on our Enforcer build. This is our custom water-cooled PC build, and this is a whole how-to series on building it so you can build one like this yourself. Now we have our Thermaltake View 71 case out. We stripped it down, just lift off the doors, really simple, there's not much to it. Couple little uh, thumb screws to get it apart, to get it down to this like, bare bones state. This case comes with these pre-installed 120 millimeter RGB fans. So it's kind of nice, one last thing we have to install, so to speak, because it comes pre-installed. It comes with these three and an exhaust fan at the back. Now, we want to install some additional RGB lighting for the case itself. And I looked online and there's a lot of stuff out there that will give you a little mini strip for like $60. You can buy something just like this at Home Depot or Lowe's for about 20 bucks, sometimes even $10. And you get 118 inches of this with the controller, with everything included for 20 bucks, you can't beat it. It comes with this nice little controller here to control all your lighting. You can dim it, you can change the colors, you can make a couple different patterns and whatnot. This is nice because you can just, if you want to light up your case without having your computer on, it's really nice. So if you just aren't using your computer and you just want to see the lighting on it, it's pretty cool. So we now have the strip lighting. I cut it to length and you can kind of see this here. I'm going to peel it out. This particular case, it kind of goes in really nice it has an adhesive back, but that's not enough to hold it. So when you go up around the corners, instead of having to use special wiring to make the connections on the corners, just loop it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some hot glue to keep the, the uh, RGB lighting in place. So I'm gonna work on that right now. And as soon as I get it done, I'm gonna show you the end result. You'd wanna do this first, cause I think it's a lot easier to work with without your motherboard and all the stuff in the way while you're trying to get your RGB lighting kind of tacked in and everything together. But you can do it however you want. I prefer to do it this way because I think it's just a little easier to work with. So I'm gonna get going on this. So let's uh, get this in place so you can see the end result on this. All right guys, we've got the RGB in. You can see it's lit up. This is the way to go. Have the case empty when you put this in because it's a lot easier to put it all into your case without having stuff in the way. So once your RGB is in, we tested it out real quick. This is a 12 volt uh, RGB setup here. So once you get it all set up, you're good to go. Now we're gonna move on to installing the radiator and fans. I've already put together the radiator and fans on the bracket supplied by Thermaltake, this bracket here. We just mounted three more 120 millimeter RGB fans with this Primo Chill 420 millimeter, uh, millimeter radiator assembly. So you can see that in the photo here. And it's real critical to get your fan airflow direction correct. If you're not sure, let me show you this fan here. The fan, the good looking side of the fan with no brackets for the motor, that will be sucking air that way and blowing it out the back, which is technically the ugly side of the fan with the bracket with the motor. So just remember the side that has no bracket will be sucking air one way and blowing it out the other. We set this up like this on our radiator to suck air through the radiator and blow it out the top of the case. So this will be sucking this way out the top of the case because our three fans in the front are gonna be drafting air in. These are gonna be sucking air out and this, re this rear uh, fan will be also sucking air out of the case. So it's good airflow setup to keep everything as cool as possible. So once we put this in place, we're going to move on to installing the power supply and the motherboard and then the pump and a bunch of other stuff. So we're gonna keep on moving on the build, get these other stuff put in, and we'll stop as we go to explain a couple things. All right. All right, guys, we have our radiator now installed and we're moving on to the pump installation. And here we have the XSPC D5 Photon Pump. I don't know who named this thing, but I guess they wanted someone to be intimidated. So this pump is huge though. It is, compared to a not Coca-Cola can, it is very big. So you can kind of get an idea of the size. And the capacity is 690 milliliters. So this will give you some additional cooling benefits just by the sheer size from the hot water that re-enters the uh, reservoir here, 
you will get some additional cooling benefits just because it is this big. So this pump in particular, I'm going to have him pan over this to give you an idea on it. This pump is the X4 pump that is a compact and high performance pump designed for PC water cooling. The pump has a flow rate of 600 liters per hour and a ceramic shaft for longer life and reliability. So if you want to choose a good pump for your build, I would highly recommend this one because it is all glass. It is very well constructed. I can't really find anything wrong with it and it should be very easy to mount. It's supplied with a couple brackets, this bracket and then the top and bottom bracket here to mount. So we're going to get this mounted right now. Let's get it mounted. All right, guys, D5 Photon going in. <laughs> D5 Photon. Oh, this thing is a bit. All right, guys, we got that pump mounted. Fairly easy to install. Looks good in the case. And now we are going to do the power supply next. Pretty straightforward. We already put these rubber pads down here if you want to look at them. Uh, these came with the case. If you're wondering what those rubber pads are that come with the case, they're for your power supply. You just stick them down there, and that's what your power supply is going to sit on. So we're going to grab our Corsair AX1000 watt power supply, which is already out of the box. And I'm going to grab it right here. I already have some stuff done on that. And we have some cables already put in. This is really easy, easy to install. We're just going to take out the back plate, just kind of slip it in place here. And there's just four screws that mount that in. So that's a pretty... Pretty simple thing to install. So I'm gonna do that real quick and move on to the next part. All right guys, so now we have our power supply mounted. It was really simple to install. There was just four screws on the back side of this power supply right here. Just a couple screws, one, two, three, and four. Real simple to put in on those four rubber uh, pads, but that's a real easy thing to install. We already pre-attached some of the cables. Um, just because we had them already going from before. So now we are going to install the motherboard. And remember, we already had our RAM put on, our CPU, if you missed any of that from earlier, watch part one of the series on how we did all that. So we're gonna go get the motherboard here and we're gonna get that bolted in place on the case. And just so you guys note, there are standoffs already on this particular case that are already here, right here. So you want to set your motherboard in place, making sure that everything's lined up with your standoffs so that nothing's out of place before you start screwing it down. If you need to use standoffs, most motherboards come with standoffs supplied. So use the standoffs there, or if you need additional standoffs, you should be able to locate some on the case or some with the case. But we're going to put that in right now. So let's get the motherboard. Okay guys, so now we are doing some cable hookups. Basically, the cables from the tower itself have to be hooked up to the motherboard, the power switch, the USB ports, and all those cables that come with it have to be hooked up. To dress it up a little bit, we have, let me get them here. We have these sleeves. So you can get these colored sleeves online or at some electronic stores. Um, they come in various colors. We've got silver and blue, because that's kind of our theme here on the color scheme of our build. We do also have black, some black heavier sleeves too. So for your cable management, these are really nice. Uh, some come pre-split, so you can just open them up and wrap them around your cables. 
to kind of clean everything up. And we're already doing that with this cable set right here, this blue one, if you can see it coming through here. This is our switch setup. Now it's real important to note in your manual for your motherboard, they have the pins on the board are right down in the corner. You can zoom in on that. You need to identify the exact plus and minus pins for your switches and LEDs and all that. You have to make sure you have that in order. So refer to your manual prior to hooking those up. Don't guess at it because you'll probably get it wrong. So we're going to hook that up right now, do a couple other cables for the motherboard and continue on with the build. So we're just gonna keep on going here. So now we're, all right guys, so now we have to install the graphics card. We had to purchase a Thermaltake riser cable in order to use this special bracket that this Thermaltake 71 case uses to hold on to the graphics card itself. So basically, we're going to be putting in this 200 millimeter uh, thermal take cable, and we'll mount that right to the bracket. We'll show you how to do this. We're going to want to mount it though underneath, not through the slot because it won't be able to make that kind of a bend. So I'm gonna do that right now, and we're going to have our new 2080 Ti EVGA card installed here shortly. So I'm gonna get on that right now. So you're going to want to install it in your first um, graphics card slot, which is gonna be our top slot here. And now we're going to install our bracket. And put the bracket. That's the top slot though. That's the top slot? Oh, I messed up. Top slot, wrong top slot. That was, I, I looked, I missed that top slot. My eyesight's going bad. All right, one more. Yeah, one more top slot. Uh, this top slot. There we go. Okay, so now the top slot. Now let's... Right, guys so now we have the riser cable through the bracket mounted we ended up going through that little space that i said we weren't going to do but it just worked out that way we were able to get it to the top uh graphics card slot and everything actually mounted pretty good so that is how that bracket sets up and mounts the riser cable you do have to use a thermal take cable because we had a fantex cable but the bracket mount wasn't the exact same so i don't know if the other mounts are gonna be the exact same, but this one uh, from Thermaltake wasn't too expensive, I think around $30. We'll try to link it in the description below for you guys. But let's mount the graphics card. So this, gonna, this will sit pretty straightforward. It's gonna sit down, line up those two marks, line up our slot here, kind of just push it. Let's give it a push down here and see. There it goes. Yeah, so that holds nice and tight now. That's a lot better than it was looking before. So that's nice and straight, nice and tight. And now we will put the last couple screws on the back to finish the mount real quick. All right, so now our graphics card is mounted. It's all 
in the slot. The slot's locked. We're set to go. It's got a nice stable platform now. And we're ready to move on to the tubing. So we're gonna do some tubing bends here coming up. So let's keep going. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we made a lot of progress on this build. We got the tubing bends done. I will have a video on doing tubing bends coming up. It took quite a while to get all these bends because we have a couple complex bends to the unit and those do take some time and a lot of patience because to make the bend and then reheat it and make the other bends are a little bit more complicated than just doing just a straight 90 or something like that. But as you can see, we got all the tubing bends done. We started an initial fill. We had a problem with the cap on the pump. We cannot seem to get it off and before I break it, I'm not gonna do that. So I ended up putting an extension tube that runs all the way up past the height of the pump. We cracked that cap enough so that we have the air pressure off of it and we're gonna be bleeding it. I ended up sucking some solution there initially. Uh, and if you wanna know what cryofuel tastes like, <clears throat> like Kool-Aid, tried to spit that out, but that was fun. So let's uh, power this thing up and start the filling montage. Arr. everyone so we finally completed the system it's all up and running we're going to be moving it over to our new workstation here to run it with some benchmarks and some other stuff we're gonna run with it but everything turned out pretty good um, we have a controller here to do our RGB because we wanted to be able to control uh, things a little bit different on this one because of the motherboard that doesn't have the RGB header on it we did it that way but everything turned out really, really good. So hope you guys like it. We've got some cool pictures of it. And we will show you the whole entire setup over on our new workstation in just a few.